but I'm just honored to be here, and I just love you all, and thank you for coming. I was teasing with Corey, going, who's going to have the bigger crowd? <laughs> <laughs> who's going to go to Corey's? Who's going to come to mine? So we've just kind of been going back and forth on this, and he's like, I don't even know where my room is. I'm like, I think it's in the nursery, down, down in my room, whatever. So we'll see where he ends up. But, um, so this is so exciting. I'm so thrilled. I work myself up. My poor husband is like, oh my gosh, can I like give her a tranquilizer and have her sleep until, until the, the morning of? Because I've like been hyperventilating. Every once in a while, he'll just hear me go. <gasps> like, and then, um, yeah, and all you that are looking at me like you're crazy are the ones that love to do this. And, um, and I know that you're praying for me. So thank you for it. So. Just love you guys. So my um, topic is on intimacy. And um, I felt like the Lord gave that to me at the beginning of the year. Um, and I was like, okay, intimacy, what does that mean? You know what I mean? What does that mean to be intimate with the Lord? And it was for me something that was really scary and something that I would do, but only at arm's length. I would never completely be intimate with the Lord, I think because of things in my life, disappointments in my life. And it was just easier to be like, I'll go three steps in and then I'll stop. And then, it, then I didn't have to be hurt. I didn't have to be vulnerable. I didn't have to do those things that the Lord was calling me to, like standing here or doing whatever, praying for somebody or stepping out or, dis or discipleship or even just looking inside of things in my own life. Um, and so it wasn't, I remember it was an, a, a night of worship and the Lord said to me, Jane, you don't have walls, you have a fortress. <laughs> and I was like, ouch, that really, that hurts. I'm 47 years old and I have walked with the Lord for 20 something years and I have a fortress. And all of us probably have something, have something that we've gone through in our life that have caused us to not just have a wall, but to actually have a fortress. And to hear the Lord say that to me, after I had gotten the word intimacy, I knew that he was working in my heart to tear down that fortress because I need him. We all need him in such a personal way. And um, during uh, worship and all that, it was like, the Lord just reminded me of the five languages, the five love languages. And I, I love that. I love the book. But so many times we can put God into those five love languages. And then when we're not getting met in the ones that we feel that we have, so mine's like acts of service and mine's quality time. And when those aren't getting met, then I, okay, God, you don't, you don't care about me. You don't love me. You don't want to be intimate with me. I don't want to be intimate with you. I'm, I'm going to put up another layer of a wall. And it was just like, it, it's, it's good, but we can't be limited to that. And um, we have to embrace it all. Yeah. So... Um, I'm going to jump around in my notes because I just feel like that. So I think for me, the greatest intimacy um, in my journey is disappointment. Um, disappointment in the Lord, disappointment in myself, disappointment in what I think others think of me, disappointment in... Um, really the Lord and myself. And, and it goes back to, it's crazy because some of you are sitting here going, I know exactly what you think. I know exactly what you're feeling. And it goes back to even as a small child. I mean, we're 
called to renew our mind and we're called to do those things, but the enemy can still have such a strong hold. And I really believe that's why the Lord was like intimacy. Like, Jane, you are breaking through this, this year of intimacy. We are tearing down the wall and you are not going to have that barrier anymore. And, um, and so I'm going to kind of just go through my disappointments and then I'm going to go back and do um, how I was going to start. <laughs> um, I just wanted to do that because I definitely didn't want to leave it on a, um, a note of life is bad, God doesn't come through, you know what I mean? That, that woe is me, all of these kind of things, but this is my story. This has shaped my life and we all have those things. I'm just the one that gets to sit up here today and share it. But if I called anybody up here and had them sit here, they would have their own story to share and their own um, disappointments, their own struggles, their own things of having to push through not just a wall, but a fortress. And so I just kind of wanted to start with that and then go back and show you um, what the Lord has showed me just in the last five or six months. So just to start off, too, is I, I had surgery. I had brain surgery. And I think I talked about this a little bit last year for those who were there, that I've been struggling with dystonia 4, which is a movement disorder. It's kind of on the um, spectrum of, like, Parkinson's and all that kind of stuff. And I've had it for 24 years. And that definitely has caused me to have disappointment in, in the Lord, because every, every year we have our fast. Every year, that was my main focus, is I'm going to be, God's going to heal me this year from this. And then the end of the 20-day, one-day fast would come, and I would still have my dystonia. And I would still be just like, God, what more can I do? You know what I mean? I have prayed. I have fasted. You have called me to this life. I reluctantly came, and, and you're not coming through for me. And I was so disappointed, and I didn't realize that until the end of this fast of how disappointed I was in, in that, in the Lord, in, in my own self of going, what, do I not have enough faith? Do I not, you know, all of those things that we kind of grow up believing and thinking and and yes, we have to have faith in all that, but we cannot just base, when something doesn't happen, we can't just throw the baby out with the bathwater and say, well, I have lack of faith and God doesn't love me and all those kind of things. And that was something that I literally had to work through my mind because it had been so long. It had been 24 years of dealing with it. And um, so last spring, my neurologist had brought up the idea of doing a deep brain stimulation surgery and kind of giving me all the ins and outs of it. And I was like, I left with Lee and I was like, I want to do that. I, I want to do this. And he was like, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't think we should do this. I, I, you know, and, and for me, it had been like 24 years of living with this. Like I was ready to have some relief. And I was like, I don't care if it gives me 20%. I don't care if it gives me 50%. I want relief from this. And um, so we took the summer and we prayed about it. And then I went back in September because every three months I'd have Botox shots in my neck. And, um, and we told the surgeon that, yeah, we are the neurologist that we wanted to go through with the surgery and have the surgery. And he goes, okay, well, we're going to put you through a fast track. Um, testing, which was intense, for two days to make sure that you're capable and all those kind of things to have the surgery. And so that's what we did. We did two days of that up in Grand Rapids. And then on the 6th of December, when I was going back in to have my shots again, they said that you are qualified to have the surgery. And so then it was that whole thing of scheduling it and figuring out when it was going to be. And we landed on February. And 
And, and so here we are, I don't know, three months, two months out from that, and I'm feeling, I'm feeling good, and I'm feeling strong. It took a lot longer to recover from than what I would thought it was going to, but um, just for a quick update, but I am loving my hair. Yeah. And I did tell, I did tell Lee, I think I'm, I've gotten a lot more compliments not having hair than I ever did having hair. So I don't know what that says, but I think I might um, keep it short for a while. So it's definitely ladies who are struggling with your hair. Definitely makes it so much easier in the morning to jump out of the shower. Just brush it off with your towel, and there you go. You throw your makeup on, and you call it good. So I highly encourage it. And uh, so, but so to go back to just quick back to the disappointment. I don't want to stay there. But as a small child, I repeated first grade, and that for me, literally, even carried me almost all through high school. It was so hard because I was old. I was old for my graduating class. I was old for all of it. And so it was just this constant reminder to me that in first grade, that there was something wrong with me. You know what I mean? Like, it was like, well, you know, you're a senior in high school and you're 19. That is weird. You know what I mean? And so then I would kind of like, I would be like, okay, well, I'm 18. You know, like, lie, basically. <laughs> and even to this day, people are like, what year did you graduate? And I'm like, crap, how old am I? I'm 47. I think I graduated in 92. Well, I graduated in ni or 90. I graduated in 91. I mean, to this day, I still want to fib about it. But, and so that, that, and then I, as a teenager, I struggled with an eating disorder. And, um, that lasted probably through most of uh, middle school and high school, or, or um, junior high, which is what we called it back then. And then um, because I had such low self-esteem, I dealt with um, suicide and suicidal thoughts and then sexual activity. I lost my virginity at age 14. And that, if anybody that's dealt with that, which I'm sure there's people in this room that have, that the enemy just loves to play on your mind and cause so much, um, you know, he just torments you with that of going, you know, you, you're worthless, da, 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 you, all that kind of stuff. Exactly, just lies that you just have to overcome all the time and really and give it to the Lord. And I don't think that it's just a one-time thing of going, okay, I'm done with it. You know what I mean? And so then by God's grace, I met Lee at 19 and we got married and I, and I mean, that's been wonderful, but obviously it's had its own issues and all that kind of stuff, probably because of stuff that I have held on to that I haven't let go. Um, and shame and embarrassment. And so I, I'm not saying that through the last 25 years, I've been just this hot mess of just holding on to all this kind of stuff. Because <laughs> I have had victory and I know that the Lord is good, yeah. but I know that there's also areas in my life for victory. And I, I feel like all of us have that, you know, that, um, and I had said that your journey of intimacy will continue until the day you see Jesus face to face your, and when your faith becomes sight. And so it isn't a one time, you know what I mean? Like I've arrived and I, you know, we have this wonderful church and I have this wonderful husband. I have these beautiful kids and all these kind of things. It's like, it's a daily battle. And I think that's why the Lord is like, every day we need to wake up and we need to renew our mind and to press into the Lord and for what he has for us and for what he is saying to us. Because we have two voices that are continually talking to us. We have the voice of the enemy and the voice of the Father. And the enemy loves to scream. He screams. The Father talks to us in intimacy. He talks to us tenderly. He talks to us 
with scripture. He talks to us in our sleep. He talks to us in dreams. But the enemy is the one that is screaming. And sometimes the voice that is screaming is the voice that you're going to hear louder than the voice that is tenderly talking to you. And so we have to have ears that are going to hear and that are going to listen. And I feel like that is part of the intimacy um, journey. You know what I mean? Of going, of, of hearing the Father's voice. The, the, the sheep know the shepherd's voice. You know what I mean? And so we have to learn how to hear the Father's voice. And in that, that takes um, an invitation. So I took intimacy, of course, and broke it down into an acronym. So it's, I think that's what, it just how I kind of work. And so for I, I said invitation, that God invites us to join him. And so in this journey, God is always inviting us to join him, that his in intimacy begins with an invitation that we have to accept. We accept it. You know what I mean? The Lord is a gentleman. He is never going to push anything on us ever. And so we accept it. And, um, and, and he goes with us either way. You know what I mean? But we determine if we're going to trust him or if we're going to put him in the back seat. And then the end, need, is a journey begins with recognizing our need. And kind of like I said, um, when I was going through our, my, my disappointments, and we all have our own disappointments, is, is recognizing the need that we cannot do anything on our own. You know what I mean? I, and, and Lee talked about it a little bit today, that it's so easy to think in American culture, especially that, you know, just pull yourself up by your bootstraps and you just kind of go and you kind of plow through. And, and, and usually it turns out okay because we live in America, you know what I mean? But really does it, you know what I mean? What are you left with at the end of all of that? Are you exhausted? Are you tired? Do you have anything to give out to your family? Do you have anything to give out to your kids? Do you have anything to give out? No, a lot of times not because we've done it on our own. And so just to remember that we, that we have that need, um, of, of Jesus. And it says, so Jesus said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, the son of God can do nothing of his accord, but what he sees his father doing for whatever the father does that the son does likewise. And so Jesus had to rely on the father. We have to rely on the father, which then takes time. And that's intimacy and intimacy takes time. It takes a time of, of development and building. It doesn't just happen overnight. It's like a marriage. Anybody that's in here that's married, it's like initially you fall in love. Initially you see that person and you're like, oh my gosh, I, you know. Oh. But it's the, it's the intimacy that goes the long haul. It's the people that have been married 40, 50, 60 years, 30 years now, which is sad that have built the intimacy. And intimacy doesn't always mean in a marriage that everything is gonna go perfect, but it always means that you're gonna go back to that yeah. center point yeah, yeah. Of, of, of that. And that does not happen that first time that you meet somebody because honestly, that isn't intimacy. That's probably more lust. You know, like, oh, you're so hot or whatever. And so, you know, just to recognize um, that kind of a thing. Um, and then to initiate, we have to initiate um, intimacy. James 4, 8 says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. And then it's like the Lord is always waiting in that secret place. You know what I mean? He's waiting for us to open that door, to walk in, to be intimate, to give it to God. He, he, he's there. He's waiting on us. And um, I love that picture. I just, I just... Love that picture of that the Father is always waiting for us. And, um, and we can scurry around, and he's still kind of there, and I feel like he still kind of whispers. It's kind of like a bird that you hear in the morning just chirping away and just like, hey, Jane, remember, you know, who's your strength? Who's the one that's going to fill you up? Who's the one that loves you? And um, I just love that. Um, 
And then when we, res- when we pursue him, he will kindly respond to us. And he will show us things. And it's just, that's so beautiful too. And I think I'm learning that in my intimacy journey that it doesn't always have to look perfect. It doesn't always, in my mind, have to be this, 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 that it's okay to, to break, to not have God in a box. I mean, we shouldn't have God in a box. But to just be like, this is, this is different. But I know the voice of the Lord because I have spent time with him and he's speaking to me. And I just, and I just love that. <laughs> and then the, more, the momentum. The more you do it, the stronger you become and the deeper your trust grows. It's kind of like working out. So I had this surgery back in um, February and I couldn't do anything for like eight weeks. And so I was a little like, oh, you know what I mean? Like, I'm going to lose everything, which I did. But um, I, so I ran last week and I ran twice and my legs were so sore. <laughs> like, I couldn't even get up from the toilet. Like, I was like, <laughs> so, so sore. And it was so sad to me because I was like, before this, I had been running, I had been, you know, uh, biking, you know, just doing these other things. But having that two, two and a half months off of doing nothing, I lost that momentum. And, and I feel like when we don't draw near to the Father, we lose that momentum. You know what I mean? That, that strength and that, that building, and you will feel it. You will feel it. Your muscles, your heart muscle, your soul, your, just your, your um, longing for the Lord is going to feel it. And you're going to be sore. And there will probably be seasons of being sad and all those kind of things. So don't do it. <laughs> because it isn't worth it. My legs are still sore and it's been a week. So, so the momentum. And, and it's kind of like diet too. You know, just all those kind of things. And then accept the journey. The journey will come with peaks and valleys and twists and turns. And it said, blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose heart are on the way to on the highways to Zion. As they go through the valley of Becca, they will make it possible. They will make it a place of springs. The early rains also cover it with pools. They go from strength to strength. Each one appears before God in Zion. And so in those areas of disappointment, disappointment in the future, disappointment of the past, disappointment of the now. You know what I mean? We can't discredit the, the, the disappointments that we even have in the now of going, I feel like I'm being overlooked or, you know, why isn't this happening? Or, you know, all of those things of just going, I am going to continue on that highway and the Lord sees me. You know what I mean? The Lord is with me. The Lord is going to provide for me. And um, even as I look back at just the, the small disappointments in my life, in my story, you know what I mean? Um, I'm just overwhelmed and just so in love with God that he just did not leave me there in my own disappointments, in my own sorrow, in my own um, wallowing and all those things. And, and some of them, I mean, are legit. I mean, they're true disappointments. They're, they're hurts. You know, some people have lost spouses, and some people have lost kids and, and, and uh, parents. I mean, I lost my dad almost 15 or 15 years ago. That was huge. That was sad to me. That was a huge disappointment. I, I believed beyond anything that God was going to heal him. And then when it didn't happen the way that I wanted it to happen, it caused huge disappointment in me. And I was, I literally was so mad at God. I, I was ticked. I was so mad. And I was like, I don't want to ever pray for anybody. I don't want to go to church. I don't want to, I don't want to do anything because I felt like I had done everything right. You know what I mean? I had prayed the prayer of faith. I had prophesied over my dad and, and I looked unbelievers in the face and was like my dad is going to live and da, 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 and then he passed away and, and what do I do with that you know what I mean I was tipped 
And I remember I was cleaning the um, bathroom at our house. And I was, um, and the Lord just stopped me right in my tracks. And it's probably one of the only times I audibly heard him say to me, are you going to trust me? And I was just like, it stopped me because I literally had to think about it because I was so mad and I was so sad and I was so hurt. And I was like, do I trust you? You know what I mean? And, and I was like, of I have to. I have no other choice than to trust you. Because if I don't trust you in this, where's my life going to go? Where are my kids going to go? Where, where, where's this church going to go that I love? Where are the people that I love going to go? And, and God, where are you going to go? You know what I mean? I could have walked away from it all, and it could have been ugly, and, and I probably would not be sitting here right now um, because I think it would have been just a huge opening for the enemy to be able to come in and just take my life off course. And so I just encourage anybody, too, that just has one of those defining moments of going, God, you know, I'm pissed. And it's okay. You know what I mean? Like, he knows. And so for us to sit here and be like, da 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 he knows when we're mad at him. And so be honest with him. And then I feel like then the heavens are open for him to come down and speak to you. And it's a, it's a tearing down of that fortress or that wall. But if we just ignore it and go, oh, no, 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 God, I'm not mad. This is, this is great. It's just like you have then just shut off a part of your heart to the Lord. And so it's like be, be angry, but don't stay angry. You know what I mean? And have a heart that, that is, listens, like I said, the chirping of the bird of, of, of the Lord being able to say to you, come on, get on back track. I love you. And now even through all that, I'm able to see things with my dad that I wasn't able to see at the time of him being faithful, of, of, of healing that was in, in him, that was working through him that I did not see, that I did not see as that because I was too close to it and I was too hurt and all that. But he drove himself to Chicago, you know, three days before he died. I mean, that's unheard of. He did not look sick. I mean, and so it's just cool to be able to look back and go, God, you are faithful. You know, even when I am faithless, even when I don't understand, even when I'm hurt, even when all of these things, you are good enough to come through into my bathroom while I'm cleaning it, which is rare, and tell me that, you know what, it's okay. And do you trust me? Because I love you and I'm going to be with you and I'm going to walk with you through it. And that's exactly what he did um, for me. And it was, and it was amazing. And then it was able, I was able to walk my kids through that. And, and probably just anybody that was watching me at the time, I know it was a long time ago, but um, I do, I feel like God just gave me a grace to just be able to, to walk through it. And then the sea is crucified. The intimacy is a journey towards the cross. It says, if anyone, could come, if anyone would come unto me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. A cross is a death to the old self, mindsets and identity, and coming to life on our own, on our, on our new, not our own, on our new identity. You know what I mean? And it's just like, I love that, and I'm not even sure where it's found, but that the Lord has a name for us that nobody else knows, but he knows. You know what I mean? And it's so, I mean, that's so personal, and it's just so beautiful that, that even when we struggle, even when, when we have our walls up or a fortress or we're confused or all of those things, that God has a name, and he sings over us. And he loves us. And really all of it takes is just us opening up our hearts to him and just saying, Lord, here I am. I don't have it figured out. I'm scared. I don't always hear your voice. But I want to be intimate with you. And he will meet you. He promises that. And I, and I love that. And... Um, 
Galatians 2.20 says, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for, for me. And then I, and in this, it's like I could have chosen, any of us could have chosen, to become Lot's wife. Looking back, in disappointment, became her tomb. It was like God graciously went to Sodom and Gomorrah through um, Abraham. You know, Abraham just wrestling with the Lord. Like, if there's just five righteous, if there's just two, I don't know if I have the numbers right. You know, like, just save them. And he gets them out. And the, the one thing that they knew that they could not do was turn back and look. Not turn back and look at our old life. Not turn back and look at those old things. And what did she do? <laughs> she looked back. And what happened then? She turned into a pillar of salt. And I just feel like that is bitterness. You know what I mean? That when we look back on things that God graciously brought us through, and then we don't take that as what it is, and we become bitter. We become like Lot's wife. We become a pillar. And there's nothing that flows out of that. I mean, she became a pillar of salt. But you know what I mean? Like, a little salt is good. A little salt makes things. But a pillar of salt is not good. And, um, and so I, I, just, I just think in our journey, in our disappointments, even in our, in our things that are beautiful, of not looking back because it's a new day. It's new things that God has for us. And just to keep pressing forward and keep pressing on and, um, and not look back. I just think, I just love that. So none of us want to become Lot's wife. None of us want to become uh, that, that tomb. And I just think how sad it was that that's what she thought was good, you know what I mean? Of not, of not seeing the future, of not seeing this beautiful land that the Lord had ahead of her. She'd rather look back at just the yuckiness of what was. And, um, and so I just encourage all of us, myself included, to just keep pressing forward, even when it's hard, even when, when we don't understand it, even when things look, um, uh, not maybe fruitful or whatever in our own mind, but to not look back, but to know that God has something beautiful ahead of us. And then the last of it is the yield. The way we arrive is by giving up. The Israel wandered for 40 years before they refused to yield. And in that, God was faithful. Their shoes never ran out. He brought them manna. He brought them quail. He brought them the cloud by day, the fire by night. But that was not his best. It was supposed to be the 11-day um, truck, truck to where they needed to go. But it took them 40 years because they would not surrender. They would not yield. They would not trust. And God had a, a, it took a whole generation that was never able to go into the promised land because of that. And I don't want to ever be that. You know what I mean? I don't ever want to, to have that fortress up or that wall up that's so high that I'm not able to do exactly what the Lord has for me or has called me to or is, is having me pray for or believe for my kids or for my grandkids or or my husband or any of those things. Um, and so walls, it says we, we choose whether we keep God in on the side, on the other side of the walls at arm's length or whether we yield to him and invite him to destroy the walls of shame, disappointment, insecurity, and become our father in our secret place. And so it's like he's waiting there, but it's our decision if we're going to let him in. And I just love that. And so women, we want to have in our hands so much grace and love in one hand for each other and for those that are around us. But in the other hand, we want to have a chisel 
that is ready to take down the walls that we have a lot of times put up ourselves for protection and not let the enemy use those walls to keep him out and to just knock him, knock him down. You know what I mean? When we feel like things are coming up, when we feel like the walls are getting taller and all those things of just going, we, he has equipped us to, as women, as warriors to pray, to, um, to believe and not to let the walls come up and think, this is it, I'm trapped. You know what I mean? Like I'm on this side, he's on that side, but to, to knock those walls down. And so I just encourage you in that. And so many things that allow that we allow to keep God at a distance. He is saying, give to me. You know what I mean? Don't, I am your source. I am your supplier. And you try to do these things on your own. And when you do them on your own, you become exhausted and you can't do it. And, and instead of being able to knock these things down, you, you have no strength to do it. And then the enemy can come in. And I think so many times, I mean, obviously he's under our feet, we're bigger, but we also have to just be reminded that we have to keep renewing our mind and not let the enemy in because he will come in. He's like a lion looking for what's weak to come in and do that. And then the, the final destination is just trust of just trusting that he loves us more than anything, that he has a call, that he has a purpose on us. Whatever we're doing, if we're a mom, if we're in the workplace, if we're pastoring a church, if we're um, in school, if we're having kids and, and new ones, and whatever it is, that he has a destination for us and not to... to, to um, hide from that, but to just really press on and press forward to the great cause and the great, is it in um, Timothy, you know, that you've run that race and at the end of it is the crown of glory. And that's what we're all going for. Yeah. And, and so many times we use that in um, funerals and all that, but I believe that that's in the race that we're in today. Yeah. You know what I yes. mean? That yeah. we get that crown every day as we push forward. God doesn't say we just get one crown. We get multiple crowns, I believe. For every victory that we surrender to him and that we win, he puts a crown on our head and then we get to lay that at his feet. And I don't believe that that's just one. I believe that that's many things because we all go through things. We all have things that we have to go through. But intimacy is the greatest thing that we need in our lives. And I believe that that is the biggest thing that the enemy is after. And so as we push forward, like I said, your journey of intimacy will continue until the day you see Jesus face to face and your faith become, becomes sight. So it's not a sprint, it's, it's a marathon. And it's a marathon that literally is going to take our lives. But in a marathon, I've never run one, I want to, there are check stations, there's water, there's refreshment. And so God doesn't call us to do a marathon and just like, eh, you know, go run your 26 too, and hopefully at the end you don't die. He set us along the way these beautiful things where there's that nasty goo and there's... Um, water, Gatorade, or salt taps, or, you know, any of those things. Like, he has called us to run a race, but he has not left us to do it on our own. And I love that. I love that. That every couple miles on a marathon, we just had it last weekend, there's a water station. And don't pass that water station. Fill yourself up. Take what he has given us. Take what he has provided for us and then continue on to the next one, and then continue on to the next one. And it's probably going to be longer than 26 miles, ladies. <laughs> That's something man came up with. God, we have that until we see Jesus face to face, and that could be years, 
that could be miles and miles and miles, but he has given us the strength to do it. And I love that. And I love God. And I love that even at 47 in January, he could talk to me and say, Jane, you have got to pursue intimacy. And I, it, you're never too old. You know, anybody that's sitting here going, I have kind of pushed that aside because I've been hurt or I've had disappointment or I have that. God is no respecter of persons. And so at 47, when before any of this, before any of the surgery, before any of that, he told me, you have got to pursue intimacy. And I feel like each and every one of you, I'm telling each and every one of you that you need to pursue intimacy. And if you are, do it stronger, do it harder, and you will find more of God. And there's nothing more beautiful in that. So thank you. Thank you. So let me quick pray for you girls before we head out. And I'm not totally sure. The schedule's a bit confusing. So you can go to lunch. You can catch another session, whatever. But I just want to pray for you guys. Lord, we just love you so much, Father. We just thank you, Father God, that in our journey, Father, that you have called us to intimacy, Father God. Lord, that when we have walls up, Father God, that you, Father God, have given us the tools to tear those walls down, Father. Lord, that your heart, Lord, is to pursue us, Father God, to draw us closer to you, Father God. Lord, that you are waiting for us in the secret place, and I thank you for that, God. I, I repent, Father God, for running, Lord, and I know that each and every one lady that's sitting in this room, Father God, too, has that same heart, Father God. We want to know you more, Lord. We want to have ears that hear, Father God. We want to have hearts, Father God, that, that um, pound for you, Father God. Lord, that don't pound for the next series that's coming out on TV, the next this, that, or the other, Father God, but Lord, that we would take that time, Lord, that we would find you in that secret place, Lord, that you would build us up, Lord. And Father God, that you would take our mistakes, Father God, that you would take our disappointments, Lord, and Lord, that you would use them, Father God, for your glory, Father God. You said that by the blood of the Lamb and the word of of your testimony or of our testimony, Father God, that you will use us, Father. And so I thank you, Lord, that each one of these ladies, Father God, has a call, has a destiny, has a testimony, Father God. Help us to be a light, Father God. Help us to arise. Help us to shine, Father God, and be all that you have called us to be, Jesus. We thank you so much for it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.